How did you cross the border? Did you uh, walk? Walking, yeah. Wow. Walking. How long did that take? Uh, maybe five hours, four or five hours. Jeez. I stayed in Tijuana for eight days, waiting for the fog to come, so the helicopter and immigration people wouldn't see us. So they come down one night and they say, let's go. Everyone goes together. Yeah, everybody go. How do you know if there's border patrol around here? The people watching, they let me know. So there's people watching us right now? Yes. It was like a swamp, you know? We gotta run, we gotta swim. What we gotta do here, you know? One in 30 people. A mom pushing the kids, you know? I heard a couple, couple people die crossing the, the river, you know? It's tough, you know. So it's it's like uh, you were recommended for no one, you know. It's a risk of life. Or... <laughs> Reality is like you can try a different way, you know. It's actually once you cross to San Diego that Glover faced the scariest moment. They say we're not gonna let you guys out. His guide owed money to the coyotes, so they decided to take all the migrants hostage. It lasted 12 days. We thought we were going back, you know, to Brazil. 43 days after he left his home, Glover arrives in Connecticut. Of all places, why Danbury? Over here, they have a lot of landscaping. There is more opportunity the way I come from. I was like, oh my God, this country, I can be a professional athlete. You know, I can be a boxer. The next day, I was already in the gym lifting weight. I was just lifting. My first job was $7 an hour, landscaping was $7 an hour. I was like, this is amazing. Glover meets his future wife, Ingrid. When I met him, I said, what do you do? And he said, I take trees down in his broken English. So that was cute. I got married. When you casou with her, you didn't manage to enter the green card there? No, because when I entered illegal. He makes friends, and one of them shows him a tape of UFC 1. Royce Gray State beating the first UFC. I fell in love with it. And Next day, I sign up in the gym. Wow. I want to find jiu-jitsu school because I want to be UFC champion. He came in the gym. He was like, I want to train for the UFC. He was landscaping during the day, and then he would train at night. Like, every day. He's just the most disciplined person I've ever met. All he want to do is fight. That's all he liked to do. And I said, you know what? I said, you stay humble, fight your opportunity will come to you. And sure enough, although he loses his first pro fight, his performance catches the eye of John Hackleman and a certain UFC legend. We love the way Glover was so tough. You say you could train me? John and Chuck asked Glover to move to California to train with them. I said, that's an opportunity in a lifetime for you. Go, please go. You're training with one of the best in the world. Ingrid quits her job and follows Glover. And I was going to do anything I could to support him. He wanted to train with Chuck Liddell. Train with Chuck Liddell when he was the champ of the world. Chuck and Glover were inseparable, you know, training partners. If it's possible, I think he might like fighting more than I do. I train with the best coach in the world, John Hackman. And soon enough, Glover starts realizing his mistake. I knew I made the mistake, you know, I was like, damn it, man. Now, all this opportunity to be a professional athlete and I come because up Because you had come illegally. Illegally. So, you know? And he's right to be worried because his past is about to catch up. But before we get there, if you like this video so far, please subscribe to the channel. Rocky. Rocky, you know? Listen, uh, I don't know what to say because I ain't never talked to no door before, you know? What are you doing inside my house? I know you ain't too happy at this moment, you know? Listen, I'm just trying to edit this video. Please leave. Oh, could you do me a favor? You know, I ain't got nobody to spend Thanksgiving with, you know? In January, in Canada. 
how about maybe you and I, I mean, we go out together, get something to eat, I don't know, maybe laugh a little bit, who knows, you know? Would you like to, uh... This video is sponsored by Price Picks. Price Picks is the best legal way to play player props in the US and Canada. You pick two to five fighters, look at their projections, and simply choose more or less. Price Picks has a ton of stats to choose from, including significant strikes, fight time, and takedowns. It's incredibly easy to play. So what? What's wrong, damn it? I'm afraid! All right? You can win up to 10x on any entry, for real. Nothing is real if you don't believe in who you are! What the? What are you talking about? I don't believe in myself no more, don't you understand? It's just you versus the projected numbers. You wanna know the truth? The truth is I don't wanna lose what I got. Then just click the link in the description and use the promo code GAVIA when you sign up. Price Picks will match your deposit instantly, up to $100. A big thank you to Price Picks for sponsoring this video now. Back to it. It doesn't take long for Glover to catch the attention of the most powerful man in MMA. I remember Dana White was there 2007 Watch me fighting Sukuju. Glover's biggest fight to date. That was his last door he had to open to get in. And I knocked him out. I knocked Sukuju out in the first round. And we were sure he was in the UFC now. Then we heard the news. I shake Dana White's hand after Sukuju fight in 2006, and he said, get, you, get your situation figured out, and we sign you right away, man. I believe in, in people coming to this country fr from other countries, but doing it the right way. Yeah. You go through immigration, you get in here, and, right. and, and these people get to realize the American dream. Because you didn't have a proper visa, right? Yes, because I come here illegally, so... So, yeah, that was the big problem. You had to go back to Brazil, and yeah. it was always told to us that it was visa issues. That was the reason for the Brazil problem. Those who enter the U.S. illegally cannot apply for a green card inside the U.S. They can leave the U.S. and apply for a green card abroad. But for that, you have to go to your country on your own terms. You know, we thought we had a pretty good chance. We had letters from Chuck, we had letters from friends, we had letters from the UFC. Then I went an interview, and that's when we got, got denied. This commission in good conscience, cannot recommend you for a license, and we therefore deny your application. Shit. Now I gotta... What you do now? Didn't I do what you asked? Yes, you did. So I should get a license, right? Not exactly. It was a nightmare for Glover. It was a nightmare the way that happened. Glover and Ingrid appealed the decision. The appeal is also rejected. You know, we had a moment, we cried, I called him, you know, and then you sit back up and you figure something else out. There's not much else to figure out. If your appeal is rejected, it's pretty much game over. People telling me that a second appeal will never be approved, ever. She was really angry and upset because, you know, we could have this life. Esperei seis meses sem lutar, sem dinheiro, casado aqui, minha mulher me ligando. Anybody else would have crumpled and just crawled on under, under a rock. Foi um, um dos piores momentos da minha vida. Fighting isn't like being an accountant or something where you can do it, you know, for 50, 60 years. Fighting is short. It's a small window of opportunity. You say, what's going on? Why, why? What's happening, you know? What's this? Why is happening that way? Why am I missing this prime? Man, that's the prime was for that. He lost his chance to make a, get a title. Right, so don't say something about going after what makes you happy? No, that's the pursuit of happiness. But what's your point? My point is I'm pursuing something and nobody looks too happy about it. I asked Chuck this, I said, hey Chuck, you think I should fight uh, this guy? I mean, I'm right now, I'm in a hype, I'm waiting for UFC, you know? He's like, you gotta fight that, you gotta fight everybody. Because if you can't beat that guy, what are you gonna do in UFC anyway? I mean, maybe you're doing your job, but why you gotta stop me from doing mine? Because if you're willing to go through all the battling you gotta go through to get to where you wanna get, who's got the right to stop you? Because I knew I made a mistake, I can't, I can't change this right. now, but I'm gonna do it right now. I start fighting everybody. Oh, that's when you went and killed everyone. Like, yeah, that's when you went and you won 20 in a row. Yes, yes. I was fighting everybody. Was I had like fights, like, line up like every two weeks. Sometimes they pay, sometimes they don't. One year passes. I mean, maybe some of you guys got something you never finished, something you really want to do, something you never said to somebody, something and you're told no, even after you pay your dues, who's got the right to tell you that? Who? Nobody. It's your right to listen to your gut, and ain't nobody's right to say no after you earn the right to be where you want to be and do what you want to do. I was fighting for him as best I could over here. I would call that 
that, that desk every day. Help yes. me. Grinding. The Grinding. Race. Dude, that's what I'm talking Grinding. about. Bro. Two years pass. And we keep hoping, man. We're just hoping, you know? Well, what do you mean? Alguém vai ter que fazer alguma coisa. Three years pass. I don't like to take no for an answer, and we just don't give up.